Great day. I'm Marshawn Crystal. This is WAJ. We are Jackson News. And today we have in our studio with us Mr. Brian Berry, General Manager of King Edward Hotels, who's also with HRI Properties out of New Orleans, Louisiana. We're so happy to have him in the studio today. We're going to be talking about some great things that happen in terms of development in downtown Jackson, and he has a lot to say, and they're doing a lot of great things down there. And we're certainly inviting every one of you all that are watching this program to come down to downtown Jackson and see what's going on. And with that, uh, welcome, Mr. Barry. Marshawn, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, we're so glad to have you here. I personally am excited because I've actually seen the development that is going on downtown. And certainly what you all transformed the old King Edward Hotel into this magnificent uh, building and certainly a hotel for the modern ages, but also has the nostalgia of the old hotel. It so does. I know a lot of people uh, recognize it by two names, really. Uh, we talk about we talked about that before the show started, and that's uh, Hilton Gardens. And uh, Hilton Garden but yes, but sir. but we we still fondly refer to it as King Edward. And I'm sure that's what everybody else refers to it as they, well. They do. If you discuss with any Jacksonian here, uh, and you tell them, well, we're located downtown where the Hilton Garden Inn, and most of the people say, I'm not familiar with that location, and we just reiterate to them, you know, King Edward Hotel, and everyone knows us as that. <laughs> exactly right. We do appreciate having the Hilton flag on the property, uh, and we're glad to have the Hilton downtown, but at the end of the day, we are the King Edward Hotel. And we're glad to have you all down there. I remember fondly as a former city councilman here in the city of Jackson, I want to say probably in 2007, uh, when we started to uh, really have a real robust conversation about making that hotel, a uh, reopening the hotel, as of what it is today and so it has come a long way since those conversations and so uh, tell the people a bit about the uh, from a historical perspective to a current view of where you are with the King Edward Hotel and then we're going to talk about also the uh, development that's going across the street. Sure the property was originally uh, opened in 1923 as the King Edwards Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know we have the iconic sign on top of the building which has been displayed in multiple movies throughout the United States and uh, saying that it is the King Edwards Hotel, but uh, it was opened in 1923. Uh, it was shut down in 1967 after multiple years of use. Mm -hmm. uh, we redeveloped the property in 2009. You said 2007 mm -hmm. when you start to see it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. In 2009, the building was reopened as the Hilton Garden in King Edward, mm -hmm. and uh, we've gone everywhere from there. We're, uh, we've not only revitalized that building as well, We've also revitalized the Standard Life Building, which is HRI Properties Building, directly behind us. There's, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of history uh, in this city, and those two buildings carry a lot of it. And HRI is very proud to be part of this community. Sure, and I think one of the most unique things that I can think of in terms of the uh, hotel and also the old Standard Life Building, as you mentioned, is that certainly with the King Edward Hotel, you have uh, sort of a mixed use type thing going on. You have the actual hotel, but you also yes, have sir. lofts of living quarters for folks. Talk, talk a bit about that. We have 64 units on top of it. It is called the King Edwards Apartments. Mm -hmm. It does have a meeting room upstairs along with a fitness center and a rooftop pool, which has some beautiful views of downtown Jackson. Mm -hmm. We actually overlook the Amtrak station. You can see the trains going in and out at night, almost nostalgic with the noise uh, that, that comes from the train. Uh, the, uh, the views from the city are incredible up there. We overlook uh, Jackson State University, and uh, it, it's, it's just come a long, long way. Do you have any vacancies? I'm sure some people have that question. Well, you know, the, <laughs> the hotel stays extremely busy, and the apartments stay extremely busy, but don't hesitate to call because we'll always be able to help someone. Sure, sure. I, I know I get that question often because uh, I know at, at one point it was very difficult to certainly get a, uh, uh, a location in there, a living quarters in there, so I, that's why I asked that question, but I know y'all stay busy and y'all keep them full. We do, we do. Uh, with that being said, Right now we have a development called the Capital Arts Lofts Buildings across the street from us in the 200 block of West Capitol. That will be 31 units as well that we're adding to the, uh, to the city for, for living downtown. Mm -hmm. tell, tell, tell the folks about, because a lot of people hear this term called lofts. I know I, I have an opportunity to teach uh, urban affairs at uh, Jack State University and we, we talk about this in urban planning, but kind of explain to the public what a loft is, what that look like. Well, some of these are one-bedroom lofts, some of them are studios, and some are two-bedroom mm -hmm. lofts. Uh, these will all be uh, single, I have to reiterate that, some will be double stories, uh, two-story units. Uh, 
but the majority of them will be single story lofts uh, that will include in the area a, uh, a studio mm -hmm. for some of the artists to show off that their work that they're doing mm -hmm. there, the artists that are living in the unit. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, there will be a business center and a fitness center in those as well. So that will consist of 31 units. Okay. Okay. And so, and you, what's your timeline on those uh, construction? And all the, that? the project is is right now slated to finish in the fourth quarter of 2017, okay. and that, like I said, will add 31 more units to downtown living with our 64 in the King Edward and our 61 in the uh, Standard Life building. Okay. Okay. That's a pretty aggressive, uh, uh, certainly construction timeline, isn't it? it? That that is very aggressive, but. I'm very uh, positive that we can meet those deadlines. Uh -huh. uh, we feel at HRI that we are bringing revitalization to the downtown community uh, and, and bringing, the, bringing the city of Jackson where it needs to be. We know back in the 60s, as me and you discussed, uh -huh. that uh -huh. it was just a mecca downtown of, of cars and shopping, movie theaters. Everyone came downtown to do business, to shop, and, and it's kind of faded away from there. But one of our goals is to revitalize and bring that to, uh, to downtown Jackson. Again. Well, I'm so glad you said that because one of the things, like I said, in, in my opportunities uh, in urban planning is that we know that when you talk about revitalization for older downtowns, is you got to have people living down there, right? That is and the so person. you all are certainly adding to the numbers in terms of residents in that area. Yes, sir. And we know with those residents, they're going to want other uh, things to go along with that. We know that you are certainly in close proximity to what we hope one day will come into fruition is the entertainment district which yes, is uh, Ferris Street and so certainly with all of those folks living downtown that's going to help that project also uh, spur growth and development on on Ferris Street and then also right there on Capitol Street I know we have a lot of uh, uh, and I know you can appreciate those that uh, what they call this the uh, sidewalk cafes and yes, sir. certainly uh, eateries yep. and the restaurants Park. and things of that day Mayflower, Mayflower Apollo Market, Elite. Yep. Uh, Elite. Yeah, those are places we're certainly encouraging folks to uh, visit. We have the uh, old uh, Mayflower uh, restaurant. Great, great food. food there. Eat there twice a week. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> be careful, be careful. For that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can grow in there real quick. Uh, but but yeah, so we we're we're happy about that and. The idea is, from a city standpoint, is, is once we get our numbers to, I think the magic number is 1,500, we can start getting in what they call uh, groceries and uh, certainly uh, drugstores and things of that nature. And that's when your downtown comes back alive. I'm sure you're waiting on that day as well. I, I am. Uh, I, I think that the art lofts will also catapult uh, other downtown businesses, as you said, groceries, uh, grocery shop areas. I think uh, restaurants bars as well mm -hmm. and once you start seeing that nightlife come back to downtown then you start also seeing people want to revisit to live downtown as well sure. we have an opportunity i think right there across from the train station which is the old market building right, right underneath it we would love to see someone assist us with that and get that going back again where it's sustainable for people to stay downtown and not have to leave downtown and let's keep the money in the jackson downtown area that they're spending sure well I, i'll just say that the city is certainly excited about all the great developments going on with your uh, company, HR properties, the, uh, HR properties rather. Y'all doing a fantastic job. The city is certainly uh, open to uh, providing whatever assistance we can to continue that growth and development. So we want to thank you uh, for My what pleasure. you've done and your contributions and, and investment in our downtown area. We, we know that this is just the beginning of certainly uh, what we're going to consider a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week city. And so that's what we're looking for. I, I like to, to think about it. I'm hope, hopefully with the Ferris Project and we can get that restarted again, is that we become a little Memphis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that would attract a lot of people. It also helped us on our tourism as well with our convention center mm -hmm. and CVB downtown. Well, we definitely going to have you back in the studio in, uh, in the coming months. Um, it's very kind of give us a, certainly updates on development and things. But before we go, uh, certainly in this segment, we would like for if there is a number that people can call if they want more information about the, the lofts. Sure. I, well, you know, I don't have the number on the lofts right now at this point in time, but you're more than willing to call me directly at my office. It's 601-969-8501, and I can get you in touch with whoever we, we can to uh, if, if you're interested in the loft living. Okay, great, great, great. Well, we, in the meantime, if uh, people want to just come out and Sharing a good time. Come, come uh, see hotel the star and the finish. Exactly we have a beautiful right. hotel across exactly the street. Right. We also uh, come see the star and let's see where it finishes and see how far we've come together as a community. Well, I, I'm sure people uh, watching the show will certainly do just that. So. Well, thank you again, uh, Mr. Barrett. You've been a great uh, guest and certainly you've uh, earned the opportunity to come back. Marshawn, thank you for your time today. All right. You're very welcome. All right. We'll be right back 
with WAJ News. Medical analysis provides health care at the right place and the right time. City of Jackson employees and their dependents who are on the city's health care can take advantage of the clinic's free professional health care services. I'm so thankful to have medical analysis for me and my family and as well as the other city of Jackson employees. It's very convenient and they are very thorough and very passionate about their job. Call 601-960-1018 to schedule your appointment. Hey, what you doing? Getting rid of this cooking oil? Not that way. The city of Jackson has a recycling center for residents where they will recycle that cooking oil. But they'll recycle motor oil, antifreeze, pesticide, paper, plastic, cardboard, aluminum. These guys will take computers and printers. Remember Jackson residents, only rain should go down our drains. For more information about our recycling efforts, call the City of Jackson's Solid Waste Division at 601-960-0000. Welcome back to WAJ News. We now have in the studio with us Ms. Irina McLean. She is the Associate Director of the Diabetes Foundation of Mississippi. And we're so glad to have her in the studio. We're gonna be talking a bit about this uh, disease that's been around for Ever. Uh, and certainly Mississippi has had its fair share of, uh, of data that shows that we're leading in this category, one of the categories we're leading to uh, health conditions and uh, donation and diabetes. So I'm certainly going to allow you, Ms. McLean, to tell our audience about uh, diabetes. You're all about to have a conference mm -hmm. that you can educate folks on about uh, this disease and how we can beat it. That's, That's the main right. thing. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome again. Thank you very much for having yes, me here today. Well, we have our Diabetes Super Conference coming up on the 18th of February down at the Jackson Marriott. And we have something for everyone, whether you're someone, an adult with type 1 diabetes, an adult with type 2 diabetes, the parent of a child with diabetes. We have breakout sessions for you. We have a, a whole host of experts from locally within Jackson as well as from around the country coming to talk and help educate, answer questions that people might have about all aspects of diabetes management. So we're, we're thrilled to have this. It's an annual event. We have group discounts and we have an early bird special going on. So you know, we want people to come and learn what they need to know about taking care of themselves. Plus we also have vendors that'll be there with the latest tools in diabetes management. Um, it's it's something for everybody and it's a great event. Awesome, awesome. What's that date again on that? It's the 18th of February. February 18th mm -hmm. and give, uh, we'll do it again at the, at the bottom of the show, mm -hmm. uh, but just give them a good contact number and, sure. and, and the email address, I mean website I should say. Sure, mm -hmm. our website is msdiabetes.org and our telephone number is 601-957-7878 in Metro Jackson and outside Metro Jackson it's 877-DFM for Diabetes Foundation of Mississippi Cure. Fantastic, and we'll mm -hmm. put that on the uh, prompter too uh, so people can certainly uh, uh, get in contact with sure. anyone for questions and everything. But tell us a bit about how the conference is, is set up and like you said, I think you mentioned before, uh, mm -hmm. before the show about breakout sessions. Right, and, we and have, um, you know, breakout sessions for people with different types of diabetes. Um, to help your audience understand the different types of diabetes, we have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Mm. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune form of diabetes where you have to go on insulin from the moment of diagnosis because those cells that make insulin are destroyed by your immune system. Mm -hmm. It's generally triggered by a virus. It used to be called juvenile diabetes, but research has shown that the majority of people living with type 1 diabetes are adults and in fact you can be 30, 40, 50, 60 and older when you're diagnosed with this autoimmune form of diabetes. In fact, Theresa May, who's the Prime Minister over in England, um, was diagnosed in her 30s with type 1 diabetes. Type 2 is the more common form of the disease. About 95 percent of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes and it's it caused, um, it's insulin resistance. You become resistant to the action of insulin. Insulin lowers blood sugar. For some reason, people become resistant to that and they'll start off on diet and exercise or oral medications and eventually some people will use insulin to manage their diabetes. 
But with diabetes, it's high blood sugar. A, a lot of people get it confused with hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. When you're managing diabetes with oral medication or with insulin, you can have low blood sugar as a, a side effect of some of the medicines. So it's important that people know how to manage that. Mm -hmm. And at the conference, we're going to talk about all aspects. We'll be talking about diet and exercise, the ABCs of diabetes, what's an A1C, what does it mean, why is it important, why is blood pressure important, cholesterol and blood lipids, how does that play into diabetes. We'll also be talking about the psychosocial aspects of diabetes. When you're diagnosed, there's hundreds of self-care um, tasks that you need to learn to take care of yourself or take care of your child or teen with diabetes. It can be overwhelming. A lot of time people with diabetes get very stressed. They feel that they're getting judged because their blood sugars aren't what they're supposed to be or uh, they feel like their doctor is upset because their A1C is running higher. And it's teaching people coping skills. One of the frustrating things about diabetes, you could do the same thing two days in a row and have completely different results. So you can imagine that does get frustrating. So we want to address you know, support groups and coping skills and problem solving as a way to help out with diabetes management also. That's awesome. And so that type of information is so vital so mm -hmm. people can really understand um, what, what this disease is all about, certainly sure. what uh, effects it have. And I want to talk about that a bit. Can you talk just a bit about the symptoms and some sure. of the things and, and what uh, can happen if it's not sure. treated? Sure. Well, people at risk for type 1, the autoimmune mm -hmm. form of diabetes, mm -hmm. they tend to be northern European. In fact, the Scandinavian populations have the highest prevalence of type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. But because it's a bell curve, you see African-American, Latino, Asian-Americans developing type 1 diabetes also. It's about 5% of the population with diabetes has type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, the largest prevalence is around the equatorial regions. You're African-American, you're Latino. Um, we have type, 1, uh, type 2 diabetes in my family also. We're Eastern European origin, so it affects everybody. Um, warning signs would be thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, blurred vision, dry, itchy skin, numbness and tingling. In children, we'll also see parents report that their child became very irritable, that they seem to never get over a stomach flu. And we have a program, um, a campaign called You're Never Too Young for Diabetes, where we push the warning signs of, of type 1 diabetes in children because it's vitally important that they get the medical care immediately because they can go into a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis, which is potentially life-threatening. Is that, is that the same as a diabetic coma? Or how, how does it can work? cause, okay. yeah. It, it's, there's, diabetic coma is kind of a generic term. Diabetic ketoacidosis, mm -hmm. you don't have enough insulin on board. Blood sugars go very high. Mm -hmm. um, it starts interfering with the pH of your blood and um, you become more acidic, so to speak, because your body starts burning fat and generating ketones, and that's what happens with diabetic ketoacidosis, so it can be potentially life-threatening. And type 2 diabetes, obviously, is the worst type, uh, I guess, in a sense. They're both, yeah, pretty they're bad, both, but yeah, yeah, they're both. Well, I, let me go back, because I know you was talking about you have to take a lot of more medication with di type 1 than type 2. Is that yeah, right? you take insulin with type 1 okay. right from the beginning. Right. And with type 2, it can be controlled by diet and exercise right. to help you lose some weight. The exercise helps you, you know, better utilize glucose in your blood for energy. That's, you know, what, get, what we burn for fuel, like a car burns gasoline, humans burn glucose, a type mm -hmm. of sugar. And it's important because you have to manage both types of diabetes. And probably the biggest thing people may not be aware of that if you do have blood sugars running out of control, uncontrolled diabetes is the leading cause of those complications we hear about, like the heart disease, kidney disease, stroke, adult onset blindness. That's from uncontrolled diabetes. Sure. And if you don't treat it properly, it could also lead to death. I'm sure. It can, yeah. yes. In yeah. fact, there are some articles that have come out in research recently that said if diabetes was was reported as the cause of death, you know, rather than secondary to heart disease, it's probably actually the third leading cause of death 
instead of the seventh leading cause of death, like we've been quoting for years. Well, Ms. Uh, McClain, you have provided some uh, uh, very helpful information. Thank You've you. You've been a great guest, and certainly uh, when uh, I, I'm a little depressed every time I have these type of shows, especially when you have so much information to give, it goes so fast. And so yeah. uh, we're going to have you back uh, in the coming months, and certainly Wonderful. if you have any other uh, updates you want to give us in terms of what your uh, organization does, that's the Diabetes Foundation of Mississippi, um, we certainly want to continue the conversation about uh, how we can treat this terrible disease and certainly get Mississippi out of the one of the number two or number one slots there, there uh, when it go. comes to these deadly diseases. And so thank you again. We're going to make sure that uh, people go to the conference. I you know everyone out there probably knows somebody they're close to that has uh, diabetes. I certainly has a, a loved one in their family with it. And so I'm one of those people. So I'll be at the conference. I'm encouraging everyone watching the show to certainly come out on February 18th and to the Marriott Hotel. 9 a.m. to noon and uh, enjoy the conference. And certainly, Thank I know y'all going to uh, certainly uh, disseminate a lot of more good information. Great. Thank, Thank you, you again for being here. You've been a great guest. Oh, wonderful right. to be here. All right. We'll be right back with WAJ News. The history of a people is a history for all people. Journey through the legacy of African American culture in Mississippi from the slave ships to the cotton fields to freedom. Smith Robertson Museum and Cultural Center, a stone's throw away from the state's capital. Be educated, be empowered, be enlightened. Visit Smith Robertson Museum and Cultural Center. The City of Jackson Department of Human and Cultural Services Senior Services Division provides meal services to persons ages 60 years and older with a well-balanced nutritional noontime meal Monday through Friday at all of the city's seven community centers. For seniors who are unable to attend a center, Senior Services provides frozen, home-delivered meals to our homebound residents. For more information about enjoying a meal with a great group of seniors at one of our community centers or about home delivery, please contact the Senior Services Division at 601-960-0335. Welcome back to WAJ News. Our final guest in the studio is one of our own. Ms. Ashley Drummer is the Constituent Services Representative and also the co-chair of our Special Events Committee. She's going to be talking about some great uh, activities going on in the city, and so we're certainly excited to hear what she has to say. Welcome, Ms. Drummer. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. We're so glad to have you in the studio. I know you keep up with the city's uh, special events, and I know we have a lot of great things going on in the city, and I think what we're going to try to make sure we do is make this a regular part of our segment, quite frankly, because we have so many great uh, activities going on. So tell us about some of the ones that are coming up uh, in the future. Well, um Thalemeyer Hall is, is, is pretty busy these days. Mm -hmm. um, they've had a few things this month that have passed, but um, coming this Saturday, they have a rap concert going on there. This Sunday, our Parks and Recreation Division, the department within the city, mm -hmm. they're putting on a um, Princess and the Frog production, much like they did last year with Lion King. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like a musical. Mm -hmm. um, and then- And what's that date again? Sunday the 12th. Sunday the 12th. The rap concert is Saturday the 11th. The 11th. And the rap concert times are what? what, what from you know? 8 to midnight. 8 to midnight. And the Prince of the Fall the next day is from? 3 to 7. 3 to 7. Okay. Because I know a lot of people are going to be at that Prince of the Fall. I know my mm -hmm. daughter and all her friends will be there. So <laughs> uh, we definitely want to make sure people know when that is. Right, right. And then the following weekend, they have the Mississippi Symphony playing mm -hmm. next Saturday from 7.30 to 11.30. And then the next day, which is the 19th, we have a Lyle Lovett concert. Okay. So that's all in the next week. And then the Mississippi Symphony, Symphony will have more performances throughout the month. But if anyone wants more information on the happenings at um, Thalia Mara, they can call 601-960-1537. Okay. And, and who's it, who, who handles those uh, at that number? Who, who, who well, Andy will probably answer the phone, mm -hmm. but they can always speak to Mr. Raff. Okay, Mr. Raff, good deal. He's a good point person for okay. that. Okay, okay. Of course, this is the week of the uh, Mississippi Dixie National Rodeo, which is, is, is put on by the state, but it's a big to-do. Mm -hmm. And they go from the 9th to the 15th. Mm -hmm. The actual parade is this Saturday in downtown Jackson. It starts at 1030 on High Street and makes the block around um, a mid and high in that area. Okay. So if they want more information about that, they can call 601-960-4000. And that's the Mississippi Coliseum's number. But they have, a, they have a number of things going on this month, but mainly the, um, the rodeo is, is, is 
piece. It's the big yeah. piece, yeah. And I know that's a really spectacular event. I've had an opportunity to participate in those parades, and I know they, I want to say, come from Meridian all the mm -hmm. way over I to Jackson. I think they start today. The wagon train, right? They actually use a like a horse and carriage, like back when when they didn't have vehicles. <laughs> right. So it takes them two or three days. To we call them chuck it. wagons. They, <laughs> they come over on their chuck wagon horses and cows and all that, and it's a real uh, in, exciting uh, thing uh, to watch uh, when it comes through. And so we're excited about that, and we've had that in the city for many, many, many years. Right, they're getting like character that. and. They don't break. <laughs> they don't break, that's right. They don't break. So they don't, They're real cowboys and cowgirls. Exactly and they, right. They see it through till they get to their destination. And is that a, that's a week long, right? It starts on the 9th, mm -hmm. which is tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then it goes to the 15th. Okay, okay, good. But deal. the actual parade and the big show is Saturday. Okay, okay. And I know that, and, and, and I'm sure we you know, hit, but we can go ahead and put that out there too because people are going to be wanting to prepare for that. We also have coming up uh, mid March, we'll be doing the St. Patty's Day. Correct, on the 18th. On the 18th. And that's a big deal, and certainly want to put that out early. I know we, we have a, a huge attendance. Uh, not only locally but nationally, uh, and certainly people excited about the uh, used to be called the Hal Mail Parade. And I just think, think think it's just called the Mail Parade, but certainly the uh, uh, St. Patty's Day Parade. And so we're excited about uh, that that event as well. And is there any other big ones coming up? I know the Zippity Doo Dah is right behind that one. I want to say Officially maybe that's probably it, it, it follows, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly right. And so, uh, but for the, for the purpose of this conversation, February, any more events going on? Uh, well, the convention know? complex has a number of conventions. I think they have a nursing convention going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. So if people want to rent out the convention center or something like that, they can call them 601-960-2321. And the last thing I want you to talk about, Ashley, I know you also said you're the co-chair of our special events committee. Correct. If someone wants to have some type of special event, who do they contact? What number do they call? Let them know that. Well, way. they can call, of course, they can always call City Hall mm -hmm. and ask to speak to myself, or they can call Officer uh, Brown, Henry Brown. Mm -hmm. They can pick up the application at the first floor of the Hood Building, which is located at 200 South uh, President Street, across from City Hall. They can email the application back if they have any questions or anything like that. And Mr. Brown's contact information is located. And give them your number and Mr. Brown's number. Uh, uh, my number, you, you can call 960-1084. Okay. And we'll get you okay. to myself or Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, good deal. That's a good contact number. We'll put that up on the telephone too because I know people are interested in having things within their communities and their neighborhoods and you would be the person they call. So uh, I'm glad to have opportunity for the name with a face. Well, Ms. Drummer, we're so glad to have you in the studio. Like I say, we'll make this a pretty uh, regular uh, exchange because you always have something new coming up and people need to know uh, what's happening in Jackson. So thank you again for being a great guest. Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Have a great one. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of WAJ News. I'm Marshawn Chrysler. Great day, Jackson. day time to go let's make haste not a second to lose not a moment to waste a big cat a great ape and a sleepy giraffe don't stop now time to go let's make smiles and share laughs time with mom fun with dad that's a cougar it is snap a pic with the fam what a day to be kids lots more stuff to explore we'll soon be on our way Let's get cool souvenirs to remember the day. Hit the carousel now. Let's go round and around. Hey, what's under the glass? Oh, and look what I found. Frozen drinks to cool off, and if that's not enough, a fun water slide and a cool splash pad and stuff. Look at that, here we go. We can ride on a train. I don't know about you, I've got zoo on the brain. What a day, what a day. Lots to see, lots to do. Just one question to ask. How do you zoo? AmeriCorps strengthens communities and develops leaders through a community service. Are you ready to make a difference? 
AmeriCorps allows you to use your energy and talents to help others while earning money and gaining job skills. If you are age 18 or older, AmeriCorps is waiting for you.